I want to talk a little bit about the upside of using basic U objects and how they might differ from using structs. I've made a video about don't sleep on like basic U objects before. Sometimes talk to people who are like, yeah, but if I just like put a bunch of data into an object, why, why wouldn't I just make a struct? And a lot of the time you can and maybe just should make a struct. But I actually have an example here within uh, my active game development project, which shows you the upside of putting data within a object, but also the upside of a struct. That being, obviously, you can't save an object. An object is just a thing that exists in memory and you can't get that reference and put it in the save object and unload it back in because next time the game starts up, that memory is going to be all over the place. Uh, it's going to be different. So what we do is I have a ability unlocking system in my game where I keep track of a couple of things, namely the ability that we're talking about, the first entry here, then the level of the ability, uh, the ability handle. If you're familiar with gameplay ability system, this should be fairly familiar. If not, it's not super relevant, uh, so don't worry about it. Uh, then whether or not the ability is granted. So this is kind of the crux of why this is a thing in my game, is we have the difference between abilities being unlocked and abilities being granted or equipped. Locking it just means that it shows up in a UI menu for you to click on and be able to equip it. So I need to separately keep track of whether or not something is unlocked and whether or not something is granted. Uh, then we also have like an AP system, so whatever the cost for the AP is, uh, whether or not it should instantly activate upon equipping and what the maximum level is. All that stuff uh, is kept track of in a data table. In this case, actually two data tables because I have my spells and miscellaneous abilities in different data tables. So that's number one. A struct can be used to set up a data table, which is quite nice. A struct also uh, can be used to save the data to your save game which is essential because I want to save what abilities my player has unlocked and at what level and all that kind of stuff and which abilities have only been unlocked and which ones also were equipped at the time of saving and all that quite important like set of details. So, so far it seems like, okay, structs make sense for all of this. So why are you talking about objects? That is where the next little bit comes in. Because all of my abilities are in the end equipped from the UI, the UI element that does that equipping, which is this button uh, over here, needs to be able to edit the information on the player on whether or not the thing was equipped. Because what we have is a system where we have our save object, we have our player object, and whenever I save, what the save object does is it looks at the player, right? Because that makes the most sense, because the player is always going to be around, the UI elements obviously only around when the UI is open. But we have these buttons that when they are clicked, need to update stuff on the player too. So how do we do that with structs? Because we can, when the button is made, it gets the ability name and all that struct stuff uh, from the player. But the issue is, this is now a variable on the button itself. It's a new variable. It's a new instance of that struct. So when I change something about that on here, it doesn't reflect in the player. And if it doesn't reflect in the player, the save system can't access it. So if we go into the event graph here, you will see that it's an ability unlock info object that we actually give in to this button. And those objects are made within the player on begin play in this function. And what it does is it uh, gets data table rows from every one of these data tables. And then it uh, loops over them and makes a object for each row of that data table. And those objects literally are just a wrapper around the structs. These objects only exist as a way for me in Blueprint to be able to effectively have a pointer or reference to the struct. So if we open up this ability list, which is just a list of the ability buttons, uh, we refresh full list, we clear all children currently in the list, and then we uh, just for each loop over, and what we do is we give in the ability unlock info object. If we were to give in a struct here, what it would actually do is it would have this, uh, like, let's call this button object again. Let's call this X. What this does on construct is it takes in whatever value we give and it makes a copy of it and puts it in there. So if the value we're giving in is the actual struct itself, it copies over all the current data in the struct 
and puts that inside the button. Meaning if the button then changes anything in that struct, it only changes the newly made instance of that struct, which we created with the button. But we want that to reflect back to the player's array because that's what the save system is reading from. It's not reading from the UI element because it, for the most part, cannot do that. So what we actually want to do is we want to copy over the reference to this object. Because if we copy over a reference, well, a reference is just looking at a object. It's specifically saying, when you get to me, look at this place in the computer's memory. And copying over a memory address is still going to be the same memory address. But that doesn't matter because we're not actually changing the memory address. We're changing what's inside of that object. So this way, we suddenly can access the original values on the player's array from the buttons. Now, that does come with the caveat that the object shouldn't be deleted in the meantime. Uh, but that same thing also goes for if you're just using the structs directly. <laughs> Uh, to a certain extent, like if that array gets shuffled around or deleted or emptied or whatever, uh, you're going to be in trouble either way. So that's a separate issue. Now, in normal traditional code in C++, what you could just do is instead of copying this struct over, what you could do is you could make a struct reference variable, which is, let's denote that with a little star icon. And what that is, is effectively just a pointer back to the struct. So instead of copying over the value of the struct, what you would do is you would get the memory address of this and store that in the button. And then when the button wants to do anything, it looks at the memory address and then actually can change back the original value of the original struct. Sadly, Blueprint, uh, while it supports references as parameters for functions, it doesn't seem to support references to structs or single values as variables. So storing a struct or even just a couple of loose values in an object kind of lets you work around that because everything that you're saving as a variable that is this blue color, these objects, is a reference. It is a memory address. So the whole reason that I'm doing this is kind of just because of a blueprint work at the end of the day. <laughs> Uh, but it still might be interesting to really internalize and understand the difference between uh, copies and references and how they work and why they do what they do. Hey, if you're enjoying this content and it's helping you out, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. You can also leave a comment on this video expressing what you liked or asking questions that I can cover in future videos. And then, of course, if you want to stay up to date with those new uploads, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel as well. So now if I go back into uh, the button itself, you can understand that, okay, we have this object, which is referencing to the exact object that the player created, that we're just giving into this. And then when we get the struct out of that, and we set a member in that struct, this one is being done by reference. Again, if we were just to make this variable over here, which I uh, set up here to show you as an example, if we were to just set the value of this variable, it would be a copy. And editing anything like this would change the value on this one, not back on the player. And the player doesn't really, in my case, actually do anything with this information. It is just that the save system looks specifically at the player when it decides to save the data regarding the abilities that have been unlocked. So if we then go back into my saving function, you can now finally see, okay, we have these two arrays of objects. We know that these objects only contain an instance of the actual structs that we're going to be saving. So what we do is we loop over the array of objects and we just get the struct out of it and we add that struct to our save objects struct array. And obviously when we load the game, we do it the other way around. That's not like the most relevant thing right now. Uh, but hopefully me rambling on about all this has kind of shown you a little bit about structs and objects and what might be the upsides and might be the downsides of either or and the combination of using both of them together. Again, a lot of this comes down to quirks within Blueprint, uh, more so than it actually does. Ideally, what I would do is I would be able to go into this ability uh, list item and I would be able to go into this and say, hey, I want this to be a reference instead of a copy. That is just not a thing that we can do. So the way that I deal with it is just wrapping it in an object and suddenly that enables me to use it as a reference. 
And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. My cave students, dear supporters, Oiku, Earl, Monserville, Erno, and my cave digger, dear supporters, Mauricio Ferrias.